known as IRP or interstate parity. Now, interstate parity is a fundamental concept which helps us relate FX markets with interstate markets. So these are very, very interrelated ideas. So we'll try and explore this further. Now, these two points pertaining to IRP are very important, which will further help us dig deeper into the expression which is given here. So the interstate theory or interstate parity, it says that by hedging in the forward market, an investor realizes the exact same return, whether investing domestically or in the foreign currency. Again, the IRP relation or the IRP equation also shows that it is not possible for the investor to make arbitrage profits by taking offsetting positions in the domestic and foreign exchange markets. We are going to discuss these two ideas through a simple example as well. But you can consider that this is like a gist for the IRP. And we have a simple equation which we are going to further slice and dice and do because uh, we'll do uh, an example of this and we'll also see how exactly we can justify these two statements uh, which I just stated. So we'll be discussing that in the next couple of slides. Now, before that, let's understand what this equation is. So FT is the forward rate at time T. Now, I would uh, technically, you can call this as an expected forward rate at time T. And on the right hand side, we have S0, which is the current spot rate for a certain currency in question. RDC is the domestic currency, RFC is the foreign currency. Now, that way, it's a very simple equation to solve. So in case a question comes up on exam to calculate IRP, the only question or the only thing which you need to remember is the way in which the currencies are quoted. So whether the currencies are quoted in a direct quote or whether they are quoted in the indirect quote that will only have an impact on the way in which this calculation is going to happen. Otherwise, the IRP calculation is uh, pretty straightforward. Now, uh, let's try to understand these two points in a better manner. We'll do it through examples so that it, it brings further clarity to the idea. Now, when we talk of rational investors, they will always try their best to earn higher interest rate, isn't it? Now, any sensible and a rational investor would like to earn a higher return on their investment or return on the funds which they invest in. Now, assume that, uh, assume a, a certain currency pair. We'll take example of British pounds and US dollars. Now, let's say the UK interest rates are high as compared to the US. Now, naturally, for from any rational investor's perspective, they would start pursuing assets which are in the UK, isn't it? Because they are yielding a higher interest rate. So, because of this, the investors in the United States will start investing in UK assets to earn a higher rate. That's just a natural response. Now, along with this, there are other global investors who will be tracking the things which are happening in the UK market as well. So they may also want to borrow cheaply in the uh, in US dollars and they may want to invest the proceeds in UK or invest, invest the proceeds in British pounds in order to make a profit from that interest rate differential. Now, this can result in temporary inefficiencies. Yes, so there will definitely be a temporary price inefficiency which can give rise to certain arbitrage opportunities. However, the thing with arbitrage is uh, when more and more people start uh, capitalizing or transacting on that arbitrage opportunity, that opportunity is going to vanish. And when you say the arbitrage opportunity vanishes, that means uh, in the medium to long term, equilibrium price levels are going to prevail. So, so this is what you generally observe. Now, if we continue with the same example, now as more and more people are borrowing US dollars in order to purchase pounds because everyone wants to earn that higher interest rate which is being offered in the UK, we'll observe that the demand for British pounds is going to rise naturally, isn't it? Because if uh, more and more people want to invest in British pounds, then they'll have to purchase British pounds in order to invest in the asset which is denominated in GBP. So that's why the spot GBP USD rate is naturally going to increase because the demand is rising. Simultaneously, we'll observe that the forward GBP to USD rate is going to drop. Uh, now, this will happen because the interest rates in British pounds are very, very high. So that way, if you if you think from an interest rate parity equation perspective, we are dividing by a larger quantum. So that way, this is going to have an impact on the forward rate. So forward rates are going to drop. And it is because of this phenomena that investors won't be able to make an arbitrage profit because market forces are going to ensure that the covered interest rate parity holds. Now, what is covered interest rate parity? We are going to discuss through a simple example in the next slide. 
But this is the important